Louis VII (1122–18 September 1180) called the Younger or the Young (French: Le Jeune) was king of the Franks from 1137 to 1180, the sixth from the House of Capet. He was the son and successor of King Louis VI, hence his nickname, and married Duchess Eleanor of Aquitaine, one of the wealthiest and most powerful women in Western Europe. Eleanor came with the vast Duchy of Aquitaine as a dowry for Louis, thus temporarily extending the Capetian lands to the Pyrenees, but their marriage was annulled in 1152 after no male heir was produced. Immediately after the annulment of her marriage, Eleanor married Henry Plantagenet, Duke of Normandy and Count of Anjou, to whom she conveyed Aquitaine and produced five male heirs. When Henry became King of England in 1154, as Henry II, he ruled as King, Duke or Count over a large empire of kingdoms, duchies and counties that spanned from Scotland to the Pyrenees. Henry's efforts to preserve and expand on this patrimony for the Crown of England would mark the beginning of the long rivalry between France and England. Louis VII's reign saw the founding of the University of Paris and the disastrous Second Crusade. Louis and his famous counselor, Abbot Sugar, pushed for a greater centralization of the state and favored the development of French Gothic architecture, notably the construction of Notre Dame de Paris. He died in 1180 and was succeeded by his son Philip II. Topic: <laughs> Early Years. Louis was born in 1120 in Paris, the second son of Louis VI of France and Adelaide of Maurienne. The early education of Prince Louis anticipated an ecclesiastical career. As a result, he became well learned and exceptionally devout, but his life course changed decisively after the accidental death of his older brother Philip in 1131, when he unexpectedly became the heir to the throne of France. In October 1131, his father had him anointed and crowned by Pope Innocent II in Reims Cathedral. He spent much of his youth in Saint Denis, where he built a friendship with the Abbot Sugar, an advisor to his father who also served Louis well during his early years as king. <laughs> early reign Following the death of Duke William X of Aquitaine, Louis VI moved quickly to have his son married to the newly ascended Duchess Eleanor, William X's successor, on 25 July 1137. In this way, Louis VI sought to add the large, sprawling territory of the Duchy of Aquitaine to his family's holdings in France. On 1 August 1137, shortly after the marriage, Louis VI died, and Louis VII became king. The pairing of the monkish Louis and the high-spirited Eleanor was doomed to failure, she reportedly once declared that she had thought to marry a king, only to find she had married a monk. There was a marked difference between the frosty, reserved culture of the northern court in the Ile de France, where Louis had been raised, and the rich, free-wheeling court life of the Aquitaine with which Eleanor was familiar. Louis and Eleanor had two daughters, Marie and Alex. In the first part of his reign, Louis VII was vigorous and zealous in his prerogatives. His accession was marked by no disturbances other than uprisings by the burgesses of Orléans and Poitiers, who wished to organize communes. He soon came into violent conflict with Pope Innocent II, however, when the archbishopric of Borges became vacant. The king supported the Chancellor Cadurc as a candidate to fill the vacancy against the pope's nominee Pierre de la Chatra, swearing upon relics that so long as he lived, Pierre should never enter Borges. The pope thus imposed an interdict upon the king. Louis VII then became involved in a war with Theobald II of Champagne by permitting Raoul I of Vermandois, the Seneschal of France, to repudiate his wife, Theobald II's niece, and to marry Petronia of Aquitaine, sister of the Queen of France. As a result, Champagne decided to side with the Pope in the dispute over Borges. The war lasted two years 1142 and ended with the occupation of Champagne by the royal army. Louis VII was personally involved in the assault and burning of the town of Vitry-le-François. More than a thousand people who had sought refuge in the church died in the flames. Overcome with guilt and humiliated by ecclesiastical reproach, Louis admitted defeat, removed his armies from Champagne and returned them to Theobald. He accepted Pierre de la Chatra as Archbishop of Borges and shunned Raoul and Petronia. Desiring to atone for his sins, he declared his intention of mounting a crusade on Christmas Day 1145 at Borges. Bernard of Clairvaux assured its popularity by his preaching at Vézelay on Easter 1146. 
In the meantime, Geoffrey V., Count of Anjou, completed his conquest of Normandy in 1144. In exchange for being recognized as Duke of Normandy by Louis, Geoffrey surrendered half of the county of Vexin, a region vital to Norman security, to Louis. Considered a clever move by Louis at the time, it would later prove yet another step towards Angevin rule. In June 1147, in fulfillment of his vow to mount the Second Crusade, Louis VII and his queen set out from the Basilica of Saint Denis, first stopping in Metz on the overland route to Syria. Soon they arrived in the Kingdom of Hungary, where they were welcomed by the King Geza II of Hungary, who was already waiting with King Conrad III of Germany. Due to his good relationships with Louis VII, Geza II asked the French king to be his son Stephen's baptism godfather. Good relationships between the kingdoms of France and Hungary continued to remain cordial long after this time. Decades later, Louis's daughter Margaret was taken as wife by Geza's son Bella III of Hungary. After receiving provisions from Geza, the armies continued the march to the east. Just beyond Laodicea, the French army was ambushed by Turks. The French were bombarded by arrows and heavy stones, and the Turks swarmed down from the mountains. Then a massacre began. The historian Odo of Doi reported, During the fighting the King Louis lost his small and famous royal guard, but he remained in good heart and nimbly and courageously scaled the side of the mountain by gripping the tree roots. The enemy climbed after him, hoping to capture him, and the enemy in the distance continued to fire arrows at him. But God willed that his cuirass should protect him from the arrows, and to prevent himself from being captured he defended the crag with his bloody sword, cutting off many heads and hands. Louis VII and his decimated army finally reached the Holy Land in 1148. His queen Eleanor supported her uncle, Raymond of Antioch, and prevailed upon Louis to help Antioch against Aleppo. But Louis VII's interest lay in Jerusalem, and so he slipped out of Antioch in secret. He united with King Conrad III of Germany and King Baldwin III of Jerusalem to lay siege to Damascus. This ended in disaster and the project was abandoned. Louis VII decided to leave the Holy Land, despite the protests of Eleanor, who still wanted to help her doomed uncle Raymond. Louis VII and the French army returned home in 1149. A shift in the status quo The expedition to the Holy Land came at a great cost to the royal treasury and military. It also precipitated a conflict with Eleanor that led to the annulment of their marriage. Perhaps the marriage to Eleanor might have continued if the royal couple had produced a male heir, but this had not occurred. The Council of Beaugency found an exit clause, declaring that Louis VII and Eleanor were too closely related for their marriage to be legal, thus the marriage was annulled on 21 March 1152. The pretext of kinship was the basis for annulment, but in fact, it owed more to the state of hostility between Louis and Eleanor, with a decreasing likelihood that their marriage would produce a male heir to the throne of France. On 18 May 1152, Eleanor married the Count of Anjou, the future King Henry II of England. She gave him the Duchy of Aquitaine and bore him three daughters and five sons. Louis VII led an ineffective war against Henry for having married without the authorization of his suzerain. The result was a humiliation for the enemies of Henry and Eleanor, who saw their troops routed, their lands ravaged, and their property stolen. Louis reacted by coming down with a fever and returned to the Ile de France. In 1154, Louis VII married Constance of Castile, daughter of King Alfonso VII of Castile. She also failed to supply him with a son and heir, bearing only two daughters, Margaret and Alice. By 1157, Henry II of England began to believe that Louis might never produce a male heir, and that the succession of France would consequently be left in question. Determined to secure a claim for his family, he sent his chancellor, Thomas Becket, to press for a marriage between Margaret and Henry's heir, Henry the Young King. Louis agreed to this proposal, and by the Treaty of Gizers, 1158, betrothed the young pair, giving as a dowry the Norman city of Gizers and the surrounding county of Vexen. Constance died in childbirth on 4 October 1160, and five weeks later, Louis VII married Adela of Champagne. To counterbalance the advantage this would give the King of France, Henry II had the marriage of their children Henry, the young king, and Margaret celebrated at once. Louis understood the danger of the growing Angevin power, however, through indecision and a lack of fiscal and military resources in comparison to Henry II, he failed to oppose Angevin hegemony effectively. 
One of his few successes was a trip to Toulouse in 1159 to aid Raymond V, Count of Toulouse, who had been attacked by Henry II, after he entered into the city with a small escort, claiming to be visiting his sister, the Countess. Henry declared that he could not attack the city while his liege lord was inside, and went home. <laughs> Diplomacy At the same time, Emperor Frederick I was making good the imperial claims on Arles. When a papal schism broke out in 1159, Louis VII took the part of Pope Alexander III, the enemy of Frederick I, and after two comical failures of Frederick I to meet Louis VII at saint jean de on on 29 August and of September 1162, Louis VII definitely gave himself up to the cause of Alexander III, who lived at Sens from 1163 to 1165. In return for his loyal support, Alexander III gave Louis the Golden Rose. More important for English history would be Lewis's support for Thomas Becket, Archbishop of Canterbury, whom he tried to reconcile with Henry II. Lewis sided with Becket as much to damage Henry as out of piousness, yet even he grew irritated with the stubbornness of the Archbishop, asking when Becket refused Henry's conciliations, Do you wish to be more than a saint? Lewis also tried to weaken Henry by supporting his rebellious sons, and encouraged Plantagenet disunity by making Henry's sons, rather than Henry himself, the feudal overlords of the Angevin territories in France. But the rivalry among Henry's sons and Lewis's own indecisiveness broke up the coalition 1173 between them. Finally, in 1177, the Pope intervened to bring the two kings to terms at Vitry-le-François. In 1165, Louis's third wife bore him a son and heir, Philip. Louis had him crowned at Reims in 1179. In the Capetian tradition, Philip would in fact be the last king so crowned. Already stricken with paralysis, Louis himself could not be present at the ceremony. He died on 18 September 1180 in Paris and was buried the next day at Barbeau Abbey, which he had founded. His remains were moved to the Basilica of Saint Denis in 1817. Marriages and children Louis's children by his three marriages With Eleanor of Aquitaine Marie 1145 March 1198, married Henry I of Champagne Alex 1151-1197-1198, married Theobald V of Blois with Constance of Castile Margaret, 1158 August September 1197, married one Henry the Young King, two King Bella the Third of Hungary. Alice, the fourth of October 1160 ca. 1220, engaged to Richard the First of England. She married William the Fourth, Count of Ponthou with Adele of Champagne. Philip the Second Augustus, the 22nd of August 1165 to 1223. Agnes, 1171 after 1204, married one. Alexius II Comnenus (1180–1183), Andronicus I Comnenus (1183–1185), then three. Theodore Brandes (1204). Topic: Legacy. From the point of view of the preservation and expansion of the French royal domains, the reign of Louis VII was a difficult and unfortunate one. Yet royal authority was more strongly felt in the parts of France distant from these domains, more direct and more frequent connections were made with distant vassals, a result largely due to an alliance between the clergy with the crown. Louis VII thus reaped the reward for services rendered the church during the least successful portions of his reign. His greater accomplishments lie in the development of agriculture, population, commerce, the building of stone fortresses, as well as an intellectual renaissance. Considering the significant disparity of political leverage and financial resources between Louis VII and his Angevin rival Henry II, not to mention Henry's superior military skills, Louis VII should be credited with helping to preserve the Capetian dynasty. <laughs> Fictional portrayals Louis is a character in Jean Anouilly's play Beckett. In the 1964 film adaptation he was portrayed by John Gielgud, who was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. 
He was also portrayed by Charles Kay in the 1978 BBC TV drama series The Devil's Crown. He has a role in Sharon K. Penman's novels When Christ and His Saints Slept and Devil's Brood. The early part of Nora Loft's biography of Eleanor of Aquitaine deals considerably with Louis VII, seen through Eleanor's eyes and giving her side in their problematic relationship. Louis is one of the main characters in Elizabeth Chadwick's latest novel The Summer Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Ancestors Topic. Sources Jones, Dan 2012. The Plantagenets, The Warrior Kings and Queens Who Made England. New York, Viking Press. ISBN 9780670026673. Jones, Dan 2012. 